Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's class. This is uh, lecture number three in thermodynamics, and we have already started with thermodynamics. If you can recall it, in the last class we had uh, finished finished what? We had finished uh, calorimetry, and we had started with uh, thermodynamics. Do we all remember? Yes or no? I hope yes. You can just raise your hands and tell me that we all remember this. Anyways, in any case, I will give you a quick recap of what we had done. We had discussed the first law of thermodynamics. FLTD or FLOT, whatever you call it. FLOT or FLTD, first law of thermodynamics. And we have seen that this first law of thermodynamics deals with the law of conservation of energy. And we have seen that, if I write it in the normal form, delta Q, the amount of heat given is equal to delta U plus delta W. Whatever heat is given, some part of heat is uh, utilized to do work. The other part goes in changing the internal energy of the body. If I write the differential form of this, small amount of heat dQ will be equal to dU plus dW. This is the differential form of the equation. And we had also seen that small amount of work done dW is P into dV, total amount of work done delta W is integral of dW, and this is nothing but integral of P dV. Do we all remember this? Please raise your hands and let me know that we remember this. Everyone, remember this? Okay, we had also seen sign convention, and the sign convention is as important here. We use everything with a proper sign convention. And what is the sign convention that we had seen? For delta Q, it will be positive if heat is absorbed. Do we remember this? Heat is like uh, money. If you get money, it is positive. If you lose money, it is negative. So it is negative when heat is released. And we must remember this throughout our lives. What about delta U? The change in internal energy? It is positive if temperature increases. Do we remember this? And it is negative if temperature decreases. We recollect this, yes? What about work done? Work done is positive if volume increases. We say that work is done by the gas. Work done is negative if volume decreases. We say work is done on the gas. We all understand this? We all understand this, yes or no? Now what I'll do is I'll give you a small problem on this so that you can apply the sign convention using this. So I'll give you a small problem on this. Where is my cursor? My cursor is roaming here. Okay, I'll give you a small problem on this so that we can understand how do we apply uh, this uh, sign convention? So here is a question. 
in a thermodynamic process. I can simply write it as in a process. A gas absorbs 20 joules of heat. 20 joules of heat and 50 joules of work is done on the gas. Find the change in internal energy. Question number one is the temperature of the gas decreasing or increasing? So this is the question. I'll give you a minute to think about it and give me the answer. I have paused the screen. So the question comes right now on the screen. In a process, gas absorbs 20 joules of heat. 50 joules of work is done on the gas. Find the change in internal energy. Is the temperature of the gas increasing or is the temperature of the gas decreasing? You have a minute to win it. I hope everyone is solving the question. Do we have any answers for this? Anyone has any answers for this? This is just a question to test whether you have understood the sign convention or not. Do we have answer? 30. 30 joules. That is what you are saying. So is the internal energy or the temperature increasing or decreasing? The solution is very simple. Let me do it for you. Since you can't speak and I can't see your fingers because it is... It is uh, brighter outside and darker inside, so I can't see your fingers. So, how you got to do this? You just need to apply the first law of thermodynamics. Delta Q is equal to delta U plus delta W. I hope all of you can see this. Now, delta Q is the amount of heat which is given or absorbed. As you can see, the system absorbs this heat and therefore I will write it as plus 20 because it is being absorbed. So this is plus 20. That must be equal to the change in internal energy plus. Let me think about the work done. Let me think about the work done. 50 joules of work is done on the gas. That means the gas is getting compressed. I already told you that the gas is getting compressed and therefore this work done would be taken as negative. So this will be minus 50. From here, I can find out the value of change in internal energy and the value of change in internal energy will be plus 70 joules. Now what do I mean by plus? What do I mean by this plus? By this plus, I mean that the internal energy is increasing. Internal energy is increasing. And we know 
internal energy only increases when the temperature of the body increases do we understand this so this is the answer all of us got this please raise your hands and let me know that we got this everyone only one one two okay so that was about the first law of thermodynamics and we will be doing a lot of questions on this because this entire chapter is about the first law of thermodynamics let us move ahead in this class and move on to the next thing and the next thing is this we have not done this but uh, we will do it today and this is known as the zeroth law of thermodynamics now why it is known as the zeroth law uh, it is known as the zeroth law for the simple reason that uh, the first law was made before this then we had the second law but then we realized that this law should have been the first one but we cannot change the first law and hence the name zeroth because zero comes before first what is the zeroth law now the zeroth law or slot was given by fowler so you remember the name there could be a question that comes directly on this i had already given you I already told you what is this. If I have three bodies, A, B, and C, A, B, and C. So this law simply states that if two system A and B, A and B, are in thermal equilibrium with C, so A and B both are in thermal equilibrium with C, then A and B will also be in thermal equilibrium. Or you can say it in a different way. A is in thermal equilibrium with B. B is in thermal equilibrium with C. That means A will be in thermal equilibrium with C. When I use the term thermal equilibrium, when I use the term thermal equilibrium, what do I mean? By thermal equilibrium, I mean that they are at the same temperature. Do we remember this? Thermal equilibrium means they are at the same temperature. So basically, zeroth law of thermodynamics is telling you if body A is in is is having the same temperature as body B, body B is having the same temperature as body C, body A and C will have the same temperature. So basically, zeroth law of thermodynamics is defining your temperature. Do we understand this? So if a question comes, what does the first sec zeroth law of thermodynamic tell you? The answer is the zeroth law of thermodynamic tells us what is temperature or what is thermal equilibrium. Now, if I want to define what is temperature, what does temperature of a body mean? Temperature of a body means the degree of hotness or the degree of coldness of a body. Degree of hotness or the degree of coldness. How hot? or how cold the body is, is given by its temperature. How do we measure temperatures? We measure temperature by a thermometer. We have different types of temperature scales and we measure this temperature using some thermometric property. Now we will be dealing with this temperature in coming classes. How do we measure this temperature? What is degree Celsius? What is degree Fahrenheit? We will discuss this after this class. After we are finished with thermodynamics, we will discuss what is temperature. Right now, we only need to know what is zeroth law of thermodynamics and what is temperature. Temperature is the degree of hotness or the degree of coldness. I will give you a minute to write this thing down. Please note it.
Have we noted this down, everyone? Okay. Now, since we have noted this down, what we got to do is we will be studying the different different processes in detail and you will be noting down each and everything because that is not in your sheet. So you will be noting down each and every word of what I say. We will be doing the different different four important processes. All the questions will come on these four processes. We'll be doing these four processes one by one, detailed discussion, and then I'll give you a table. The table is in there, is in your sheet. You can see that table from the sheet, but what you have to do is to write what I'm going to start speaking now. The first process that we deal, and you must remember the name of the process. The name of the process is isometric or isochoric process. What do you mean by an isometric or isochoric process? You must be having an idea about this. This is a process, a thermodynamic process that takes place at constant volume. Do we understand this? Do we understand this? Raise your hands, everyone. You know how? Okay. Volume remains constant, but pressure and temperature of the gas varies. Remember, the number of moles of the gas are normally kept constant. There are only three things that you can change. Pressure, volume, or temperature. Here, volume is constant pressure and temperature are changing that means for any gas if the volume remains constant i can write p1 by t1 will be equal to p2 by t2 do we understand this pv is equal to nrt v is constant n is constant T is, uh, R is constant, that means pressure is directly proportional to temperature. We understand this, yes or no? If I increase the temperature of the gas, the pressure of the gas has to increase. Or P1 by T1 will remain constant. Equation of state is volume V is equal to constant. Volume V is equal to constant. Something is wrong here. Volume V is constant and you can write pressure is directly proportional to temperature or P1 by T1, pressure 1 by T1. Remember, everything has to be in SI unit. This temperature has to be in Kelvin. Remember that, Kelvin. P1 by T1 should be equal to P2 by T2. The work done in this process. Remember, there is no change in the volume. The work done is zero. Do we understand this? Well done, my bacho. Then the first law is delta Q is equal to delta U plus delta W. Here, as you can see, work done is zero. And therefore, we have the equation that delta Q is equal to delta U. Do we understand this? Okay, it means the... Entire heat supplied is utilized in changing the internal energy. Delta Q is equal to delta U. And we know that delta U is always equal to NCV delta T. Do we know this or not? Yes or no? We have discussed this in the previous class. Change in internal energy is a state function. It is N into CV into delta T and this CV is known as molar specific heat at constant volume. This is constant volume. So this CV is known as molar specific heat at constant volume. We understand this. Now we have drawn two diagrams and you must remember these diagram. The first diagram is between P and V, this is the diagram that you must understand. The other diagram is the ulta of this between V and P. That is not the diagram that is normally drawn. I hope everyone can see this. Diagram between P and V, 
the slope of this pv diagram is infinite the slope of this pv diagram is infinite and the area under this pv diagram the area under this pv diagram gives us the work done work done and the work done is the area of pv graph and this work done is zero do we understand this everything that i have told you now just now you'll have to write every single word of it it's not there in your sheet note it down i'll give you two minutes to note this down you have to draw the diagram you have to write the equation of state you have to write down work done is zero you have to write down the slope of this graph and you have to write down the first law of thermodynamics for this process and you must remember the name of this process isochoric or isometric process your two minutes starts now All of you must be writing. Yes, I should see all your heads down and your hands uh, moving. That means you are writing. Remember, but remember, beta, one question or two question or maybe three question or maybe four question. Why I'm saying four question? Because two question can come in physics and the other two can come in chemistry. So there are four questions that are going to come, three to four questions that are going to come from this chapter. Four question means 16 marks. The 16 marks can get you from a private college to the best college in your state. Please pay attention. Four questions are there. Four questions are at stake only in this topic. I'm not talking about heat transfer. Heat transfer one question at least. Here there are four questions at stake. Four questions at stake. Plus 16 or minus 20. Minus 20, you are gone. Your selection is gone. Plus 16, you get the best possible college that is possible in this universe for you. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. Once you are done, please raise your hand so that I can continue with the class. Done? Done, 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 done. Then I move on in life. Time only moves forward. I cannot go back in time because then I will be breaking the basic law of physics. 
Selling heat at constant volume, CV. I've already told you about CV. I can't find my pen. Where is my pen? Oops, oops. Oh, God. Where is the pen? Okay, I'll find out the pen. Right now, we can do without the pen. The quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram or one mole of a gas by one degree Celsius at constant volume is known as CV. The examples of uh, constant volume process, whatever process that takes place in a cylinder, a closed cylinder, it is a constant volume process. Do we understand this? Note it down. I'll give you a minute. In the meantime, I'll go and find out where my pen is hiding. It is hiding somewhere. I'll give you a minute. Don't, don't fight, Kajal. Pay attention in the class. I have found my pen. I hope you have noted this down. What you had to note this down was what I am just highlighting. And I hope you can see it in bold letters. Any process which takes place in a constant volume is a constant volume process. Specific heat capacity at constant volume CV is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of gas by one Degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. Have we done this? Yes or no? No, yes. Binary, 0 means no. 1 means yes. So I'll go on the binary system. And I will move ahead. Have you written this? Your writing speed should be good enough. And we will, uh, we will what? We will wind up this constant volume process. For every process, we will do one question. And that one question is good enough for you to sail through. And this is the question for this. Let's see who does this. Challenge, question, chocolate question, we call it sometimes. Five moles of oxygen. Wow, oxygen. Everyone needs oxygen. In the pandemic, oxygen cylinders were selling at a premium price. Five moles of oxygen is heated at a constant volume from 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius. What will be the change in internal energy of the gas? What is given to you is the molar specific heat of oxygen at constant pressure. Normally, it is not given, but it is given to you. So, good luck. CP is given to you. And the value of R is given to you. Rest is your choice. Let's see who can do this. This is how questions are framed. This is the type of question that you will find. And then you will have to relate how you can solve the question with the knowledge that you have gained over these uh, classes that you are attending. I'll give you a minute to think about it. How this question is going to be solved. A minute of silence for you to think about it. Remember, every question that you see in the examination hall, 
the answer is hidden in the question itself. The question itself tells you how I am going to be solved. And this question is the same. It is telling you how it has to be solved. You just have to solve the puzzle. Every question is like a puzzle. It tells you the solution. You will just have to think about where is the solution hidden. Hidden treasure, hidden solution, treasure hunt. You must have played treasure hunt. Solving question is like treasure hunt. The solution is there in the question itself. I hope you can see the question. The solution is there right in front of your eyes. Open your eyes. See the solution and find it out. A minute to win it. I'll give you. Any idea? No idea. Good idea. Okay. Done. Well done. It's my duty to now solve it. Basically, this process is happening at constant volume. And I am supposed to find out the change in internal energy. Whether this process is constant volume or constant pressure or isothermal or adiabatic or any process in the universe, for any, any process in the universe, what is the formula for change in kinetic energy? Uh, change in internal energy? The formula is simply n c v delta t or delta theta we all understand this only two people understand this yes n c v delta t and as i told you every question has the answer hidden into inside it do we know the value of n here yes sir we know the value of n here what is the value of n five moles are given so five moles is the value of n Multiplied by, do we know the value of uh, delta T change in temperature? Yes, we know the value of delta T from 10 to 20 degrees Celsius change in temperature is positive. Temperature is increasing, so delta U is positive. The change in temperature is plus 10, I will write 10, 10. The only hidden thing here is CV. Oops, oops, oops. CV. But even that is not hidden here. They have told you the value of CP. They have given you the value of CP. What is the value of CP? CP is 8. Yes or no? CP is 8. CP is 8. And CP minus CV is equal to R. We know this. Yes or no? From here, you can find the value of CV. Put the value of CV, it will be 6.36 something. So just use 6. R is given as 8.36. I'll take it as 8. 8 minus. Uh, 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 uh. No, no. R is given as 2.36. R key value is wrong. R should be somewhere around 2, 2 calories per joule. So just uh, understand that the value of R is 2 calorie per mole. Uh, uh, it is uh, 8.36 joule per mole. I convert into calories. When I convert it into calories, it will become 2. Now, this might look very complicated to you. But even if, even if the value of CP was not given to you, and please, uh, please, 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 please listen to what I am saying very carefully. Listen to what I am saying very carefully. Even if the value of CV or CP was not given to you, still the value of CP was given to you. 
how the value of CB was given to you is hidden in the question itself. Is hidden it? They have hidden it in the question itself. In fact, if I tell you, they have given additional information in the question which is not required. The value of CP will not be given in this question. Why they have? Why they will not give you the value of CP? Because they have already told you that the gas is oxygen. The gas is oxygen. The gas is oxygen. And oxygen O2 is a diatomic gas. Do we understand this? Oxygen O2 is a diatomic gas. Yes or no? And we have already made a big table where we had found out the value of CV and CP for all these gases. Do we remember that table? Do we remember that table? From that table, you can tell me what is the value of CP for a diatomic gas. The value of CV for a diatomic gas is 5 by 2R. Yes or no? And the value of CP is 7 by 2R. Do we remember this? Do we understand this? The value of CV is already given to you because they have told you it's a diatomic gas. They will not give you the value of CP. They will not give you the value of CV. They will only tell you that it is a diatomic gas. If it is a diatomic gas, the value of CV has to be 5 by 2R. The value of CP will be 7 by 2R. And from there, you can solve this question. You can find out the change in internal energy. Here, the value of CP was given. The value of CP was given as 6R. Uh, uh, it was given as 6 calorie per mole. But you can all, always find it in terms of R. Do we understand this, what I'm telling you? So this is how you can find, once you get the value of change in internal energy, work done is zero. The same will be the heat absorbed in this process. And you can solve this question. Raise your hands and let me know that we understand this. Okay. I'll give you one more question on this so that you are able to do it when it comes in the examination hall. And how I will do it? Let's see. How I will frame the question. You will see my question. Coming to you right now, right here. I hope you can see my screen. And here is the question. Question number one. Two moles of helium. I hope you understand what is helium. Two mole of helium is heated at constant volume. 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. Oh, to 40. So, to 30 degrees Celsius. Find number one, change in internal energy. Number two, work done. Number three, the heat given in this process. You will have one minute to solve this question. How to do it? The question tells you how it is to be solved.
Anyone got any answer? Yes. Well done. <laughs> now let us see how we are supposed to do this. And as I tell you always, the answer is hidden in the question itself. Every question is a puzzle. Puzzle has its answer in itself. Let us see how to do this. First thing first. This is a process that takes place at constant volume. Yes or no? <clears throat> so first thing we already know is that the work done in this process is going to be zero. Do we understand this? Okay, now we know that delta Q is delta U plus delta W. And again, I'm repeating myself. Delta W is already zero. So I know that delta Q is equal to delta U. Yes or no? So at the end of the day, I just have to calculate one thing. One thing. That is delta U or delta Q. Delta U or delta Q can be easily found out. Delta Q for this process will be equal to NCV delta T. Yes or no? This is the definition of CV, which is same as delta U. First, everything is there in front of your eyes. Just put the value. What is the value of N? The value of N in green is 2. Just put 2 here and we are done. The value of this is 2. Multiplied by... Delta T, which is in blue, change in temperature, 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, temperature has increased. Yes, the answer is 10. Yes, the answer is 10. So we just put 10 here. The only thing is CV, which I am coloring in my favorite color, pink. CV, how do I get the value of CV? Remember, this is helium. Helium is a monoatomic gas. Helium is a monoatomic gas. We know the value of CV for a monoatomic gas. And what is that answer? It is 3 by 2 R. Yes or no? Yes or no? We just put the values. 2 and 2 will get cancelled. And I have the answer as 30 times the value of R. This is the way in which the answer would be written. 30 R is the answer. Do we understand this? Thirty R is the answer for delta Q. Thirty R is the answer for delta U. And the work done in this process is zero. And that is how you get this. Constant volume process delta Q is NCV delta T. Delta U is always NCV delta T, no matter the process. We are done with this. I'll give you a minute to note this down if you could not do this, which I don't think would be the case. And I'll move on to the next process. And the next process is constant pressure process. A minute, two minutes. Any doubt, please raise your hands so that I can help you out. Else, it's my humble duty to move on to the next, 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 next topic. I'll give you a minute to note it down, whatever is there on the screen. I hope we have done this. Yes or no? Time to move ahead in life. And the next process is isobaric. Isobaric bar. Bar, bar, bar. Bar is the SI unit of pressure. So isobaric process simply means constant pressure process. Do we understand this? 
This is a process that takes place at constant pressure. And this is what you'll write. Every word of it you will write. Every word of it you will write. An isobaric process, my dear friends, is a process that takes place at constant pressure. So pressure does not change. So what is going to change? But the volume and the temperature will vary. We all know this. We all understand this. Let us move to the next thing. Equation of state. Volume is constant. That means... Pressure is constant. That means volume is directly proportional to temperature. Or I can say V1 by T1 equates V2 by T2. Do we understand this? Yes or no? I have written. I have also gone mad. I am writing V2. It should be T2. Oops. I have gone mad today. V1 by V2, uh, V1 by T1 is equal to V2 by T2. We do, do we understand that? Yes or no? Work done in this process, there is no change in pressure. So work done is simply pressure is constant. V final minus V initial, V2 minus V1. Pressure into V2 minus V1. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So up till here, you will note down and I will just cut this part because I will do this part in a different way. So up till here, you will note down everything and uh, you have a minute to win it. I hope everyone is noting it down. We have noted it down. Yes, sir. No, sir. Better I go, sir. Better you go, sir. Okay. Now, we come to the first law of thermodynamics. And how do I write the first law of thermodynamics? This is the way I write the first law of thermodynamics. Delta Q is equal to delta U plus P into V2 minus V1. Do we understand this? Why are you jumping? Do we understand this? Yes. For this process, please remember delta Q will be equal to N into Cp delta T. Do we understand that? Since this process is constant pressure, we use for delta Q N Cp delta T. Do we understand this? Well done. Delta U for this process, for any process, is NCV delta T. Do we understand this? Work done in this process and every word of which I am saying are golden words because question will come based on what I am saying in the class right now. It's P into V2 minus V1. Do we understand this? There is one more way in which I can write this. PV is equal to NRT. 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 So I can write it as NR into T2 minus T1. Do we understand this? Everyone in the class should raise your hands. That we understand this. I have written work done in two different ways. In fact, I can write this work done in a third way. Delta W is N R delta T. Do we understand this? Yes. So these are the different, different ways in which you can write this. Delta Q is N C P delta T. Do we understand this? Delta U is NCV delta T. Do we understand this? 
and work done is n r delta t if i cancel n n n and if i cancel delta t delta t and delta t i have the mayer's equation cp is equal to cv plus r this is how this equation is derived am i making myself clear cp is equal to cv plus r is basically basically the first law of thermodynamics applied to constant pressure process every word of it that i am saying has to be written in your books it is clear that this heat is utilized to increase the pressure uh, increase the internal energy and to do work done this is how the pv graph looks like the slope of this pv graph is zero can you see this slope as zero it is a straight line parallel to p axis do we see this do we see this also if i find out the work done in this process i can find it out from the area of this graph which is nothing but equal to p into v2 minus v1 this is v1 and this is v2 do we understand this everything every single word that i have told you every single word that i have told you has to be there in your notes every single word that is written on the sheet on the screen right in front of you should be there in your notes i'll give you 2 minutes 3 minutes 4 minutes to note it down if you have any doubts please ask is everyone sleeping or is everyone writing sleeping is a very bad uh, habit for uh, students of your age one who sleeps never uh, gains anything in his life you might have heard about the great charu khan he only sleeps for 4 hours and he says that you know if i sleep for 4 hours and 1 minute i will be using 1 minute of my life which is very important sleeping is a bad habit you only sleep 3 or 4 hours in a day in your life in your age after that you become a doctor and you will not get to sleep at all so you get into this habit of not sleeping still working you will be working in night shifts uh uh no sleep at all uh 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 sleeping is a bad habit okay i hope you have done this that was the that was the lighter part of the class
I know that uh, a healthy person needs around six hours of sleep, but for you, it's not six hours even. For you, it's somewhere around four hours. And you, you have to be more healthy at four hours. So that is how you will get. And now we come to this specific heat at constant pressure, CP. The amount of gas, the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of a gas by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin CP. And I write delta Q in this process as NCP delta T. Do we understand this? I'll give you a minute to note this down. Only noting and no sleeping. Have you all done this? Yes, sir. No, sir. Better I go, sir. Better you do, sir. Note it down. Uh-uh. Hello. I'll give you one more minute. Shall we begin? Yes, sir. No, sir. Better I go, sir. Now we come to the question, sir. And this is the question, sir. Now you will say, sir, we have already done this question, sir. Why we are doing it again, sir? No, sir, we are not doing it again, sir. What I'm going to do, sir, is just add another question here. The first question was done at constant pressure. The first question was done at constant volume. This is the solution of the constant volume. It has got nothing to do here. Now you have to solve the same question at constant pressure. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. No, sir. Better I go, sir. Better I give you one minute, sir. And you solve it, sir. Have uh, you got the answer also? Well, I can't see your fingers. I mean, it's, it's, it's very dark. And my eyesight is uh, getting uh, getting uh, older day by day. I'm not getting any younger. Okay. I'll give you a minute to uh, everyone in the class to solve this question. I'll be back after a minute with more scolding and more uh, bad words. If you don't do it. If you do it, well, I will be praising you all. If you don't do it, well, uh, you will be getting some good thoughts from my end. Thoughts on sleeping, thoughts on resting, and thoughts on not studying. So don't, uh, don't, uh, give me the chance to do this. A minute you have got.
I hope you all have done this. Yes or no? Okay. Now it's my humble duty to uh, do my stuff here. So I'll raise my cursor. This is here. Where is it going? Yes, here. So it's my humble duty to do it now. How do I do it? First things first. I'm doing it for constant pressure. The first thing, let me write the value of CV. This is a monotomic gas. So CV is 3 by 2R. And CP is 5 by 2R. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes. Number of moles N is, I think, given as 2. And change in temperature is given as plus 10. So I've written all the information so that I don't need to look up. And, and, and after this, there's nothing left to do. I can do everything in different, different ways and look at the different, different ways in which I'm doing this. That might help you in solving the question later on. The first thing I'm going to find out is delta Q. Constant pressure process. Remember, it is N, C, P, delta T. I just put the value of N. N is 2. Cp is 5 by 2R. Change in temperature is 10. So my answer is 50R. Do we understand this? Anyone got this answer? Next thing that I'm going to do is find out the value of delta U and Cv delta T. Remember that even if this is a constant pressure process, Change in internal energy is a state function, does not depend on process. For all process, it is constant. N C V delta T. I put the values 2 into C V is 3 by 2 R multiplied by 10. I cut it and I get this answer as 30 R. Now remember this answer 30 R. This 30 R is the change in internal energy here. This 30R was also the change in internal energy in the previous process. Do we understand this? But the, all, the difference is here, here the heat given is 50R. Here the heat given is 50R. In the previous process, the heat given was also 30R. So that has changed. Why this has changed? Because work done and heat given, they are path dependent process. Do we remember this? Work done and heat are path dependent process. To take this further, I will just find the value of work done. Now I can do it in different, different ways. And please, Listen to me very carefully how I'm doing it, Bacha. I can do it in different, different ways. I can do it from the first law of thermodynamics. I can write it as delta Q minus delta U. Do we all understand this? Please raise your hands and let me know that I we understand this. Yes. Delta Q minus delta U. Just subtract delta Q from just subtract delta U from delta Q, and you will have your answer as 20 R. Is everyone there with me? Now again, see beta. Here the value of delta W is coming as 20 R, but in the previous question it was zero. Why they are different? Because it is a path dependent process do we understand this okay now as i told you this is not the only way to find out delta w i could have done it in a different way what is the different way i had given you a formula let me do it by that way also so that you understand that everything is simple it's just like you hold your nose like this or you hold your nose like this they are the same process you are just holding your nose so I could have found delta W in a different way. I'll do it in green. Delta W in a different way. The formula I had given you is NR delta T. Yes or no? This is a constant pressure process. NR delta T. I just put the value of N. N is 2. R is R. Change in temperature is 10. You see, I end up with the same result. No matter how I do it, I will end up with the same result. Do we all understand this? That's it. That was your constant pressure process. If you can do this question, 
every question will be in the same way, will be along the same lines. I'll give you a minute to note it down if you have not done it. Then we'll move on to the next process. Have you noted it down? Shall I move ahead in life? Yes. Comes the next process. One of my favorite process. Isothermal process. What do you mean by isothermal process? Thermal means temperature. This is a process in which the pressure and the volume change, but the temperature remains constant. No prices for guessing this. How the temperature remains constant? You are giving heat to a body. Oops. You are giving heat to a body, but the temperature does not change. Have you come across such a process before? Yes, we have come across such a process before. Latent heat, when the body is at its melting point or boiling point, you give it heat. Temperature does not change. The body melts or the body vaporizes. So that is one example of an isothermal process. So that means that there are processes which can happen. When you give heat to a body, the temperature of the body will not change. So where will the heat go? In an isothermal process, the exchange of heat between the system and surroundings allowed. So this process is to be extremely slow. Remember, for an isothermal process, two conditions are very essential. Number one, the process has to be extremely slow. Why it has to be extremely slow? Because there must be a constant exchange of heat between the system and the surrounding. If the system and the surrounding do not exchange heat, the temperature of the system will rise. Do we understand this? The second condition is it must take place in a perfectly conducting body. Why it must take place in a perfectly conducting body? Because if this is an insulator like this, there will not be any heat exchange and the temperature of the body will not remain constant. So there must be a constant heat exchange. So two conditions are extremely important for an isothermal process. It has to be extremely slow. It has to take place in a perfectly conducting body. What is the equation of state? P into V is constant or p is inversely proportional to v that is the that is the that is the equation of state two conditions are extremely important the process must be extremely slow and it must take place in a perfectly conducting body you'll have to write each and every word that i have spoken right now because every word that i say is gold dust stardust come in your exam a minute you will get to note it down
हैव यू नोटेड डाउन बच्चा ओके वॉट कम्स नेक्स्ट द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट कम्स इज वर्क डन इन एन आईसो थर्मल प्रोसेस नो आई विल नॉट गो इन टू द डेरिवेशन ऑफ दिस थिंग बिकॉज इट विल नॉट हेल्प यू इन एनी वे आई विल जस्ट गिव यू द डिफरेंट वेज इन विच यू कैन राइट दिस वर्क डन एंड वन ऑफ दिस वेज विल कम इन योर एग्जामिनेशन हॉल mark the correct option which is the work done in an isothermal process remember all the ways that i am writing are equivalent they are all same they are all same they are all same remember that if you remember any one of those you should be able to remember the rest of the ones here i go the first way in the very basic way in which you write this work done delta w is n number of moles r t t is the temperature remember everything is in si units t must be in kelvins not in degree celsius natural log ln you know ln ln v2 by v1 you can write this ln b v2 by v1 also as log to the base of e v2 by v1 do we understand this do we understand this okay again there is a mathematical way of writing the same thing in a different way i'm going to tell you each and every way and this can be written n r t ln of v2 Minus ln of v1. This is a log value property. Ln of a or log of a minus log of b is log of a by v. Do we know this? Okay. Now, <clears throat> when you convert this natural log into log to the base of ten, you multiply it by two point three zero three. I hope you know this. So this is how you will find it written in books. Two point three zero three log to the base of ten v two by v one. Do we understand this? Oops, I have missed something. You see, oh, oh, oh. everyone can make mistakes. The only thing is that you realize that you have made mistake. N R T log to the base of ten v two. By v one. Now I can write this log to the base ten v two by v one, also as log to the base of ten v two minus log to the ten of v one. Do we understand this, everyone? Okay. Now see. Now see. If the volume is increasing, v two will be more than v one. and this thing will come positive if volume is decreasing this thing will automatically come negative do we understand this so i don't have to put a plus or minus sign it will automatically come now the other way of writing this is i put 2.303 same and rt same log same but instead of writing it in the form of v2 by v1 i can write it in the form of p1 by p2 do we understand this remember p1 into v1 is equal to p2 into v2 am i making sense or am i talking nonsense here stupid things do am i making sense do we understand this yes no I hope everyone is writing together with me. Writing is an essential practice, and I've heard it. Oops. Now, this is normally the way you will find it in books, but there are again different, more ways of writing the same thing. And again, I'm writing it. How? Two point three zero three. Into P one into V one log to the base of E ah uh, log to the base of ten V two by V one because because remember P one multiplied by P two 
P1 multiplied by V1, T2 multiplied by T2 are same as NR into T. Do we understand this? So what I have done here, Bacha, I have converted NRT into P1, V1. Do we understand this? Yes or no? No or yes? Okay. Again, I could write this in a different way. 2.303. I take P1, V1, same. I take log to the base of 10, same, but now I draw, write P1 by P2. Do you understand this, what I've done? Instead of V2 by V1, I've written P1 by P2. Do you understand this? Remember, there are not different ways of writing it. Some one thing written in same way, using different, different things. 2.303. I write P2, V2, log to the base of 10, V2 by V1. Do we understand this? Now what I have done here is I have replaced P1, V1 by P2, V2. Nothing else. And then, and then, and then I can just write one more way of doing it is 2.303 P2V2 log to the base of 10 P1 by P2. Remember, log to the base 10 P1 by P2 can be written as log to the base of 10 P1 minus log to the base 10 of P2. We understand this? So instead of writing work done in one way, I've written it 8, 9, 10, I don't know. I can write more ways instead of p1 by p2 i write log of p1 minus log of p2 log of v2 minus log of v1 and so on i can write 10 more ways but if you understand this you will understand if you remember any one of these you should be able to remember them all can i have some reason that we understand this okay i'll give you a minute two minutes to note it down basically. Have you noted it down? That takes me on the next part, form of first law of thermodynamics. Remember, first law of thermodynamics is always equal to delta Q is equal to delta U plus delta W. Delta U in all the cases is always equal to NCV delta T. We all understand this, yes or no? But here, delta T, there is no change in temperature and therefore this delta U become equal to zero. Do we understand this? Since there is no change in temperature and internal energy, Depends on temperature only. Delta U is zero. Do we understand this? If delta U is zero, my dear friends, then what happens is this. My delta Q becomes equal to delta W because delta U is zero. Do we understand this? If we understand this, then we get this formula. Delta Q is delta W is equal to all those different ways in which you have written the work done. Everything on this sheet you will write 
it is clear in this process that the entire heat is utilized in doing work and there is no change in internal energy you give heat to gas or the system in this process temperature does not change internal energy does not change whatever heat is given it is utilized in doing work but remember an ideal isothermal process is not possible as i have already told you there is no process in this universe where entire heat can be converted into entire work do we understand this therefore an ideal isothermal process is not possible it is only theoretical concept because we cannot find a work we cannot make a machine we cannot do what we can't do we cannot convert entire heat into entire work an ideal isothermal process is not possible an ideal isothermal process is not possible an ideal isothermal process is not possible and you will write every word that i have told you and i'll give you a minute to do that Have you noted it down? Okay, I'll wait. Shall we move ahead in life? The next thing is the PV graph for this process, and you can see the PV graph for this process. The PV graph is in the form of a parabola. P into V is constant. Do we understand this? You have to draw this graph. The area under this graph will give you the work done. Do we understand this? when volume is increasing pressure is decreasing do we understand this and the slope of this pv graph is minus p by v don't forget it ever in your life the slope of this isothermal pv graph is minus p by v that means at any point if this is the point and i will just make it bigger for all of you to see while i am making my point oops where is this this is here i hope this will uh, this will uh, suffice shall i make it bigger shall i make it bigger make it bigger from here i think now it will be shown to you so basically when i say the slope of pv graph at any point this is the point i have picked the volume here is v the pressure here is p the slope of the graph at this point at this point the slope of this graph will be minus p by v do we understand this i think it has gone out of the screen so i'll just make it bigger do we understand this raise hands draw everything that i have drawn on the graph and write everything what you have to write is the slope of the graph is minus p by v and everything that is drawn on the graph you will have a minute to win it 
And also, I have forgotten one thing. Uh, I have forgotten one thing to mention here that this graph is known as an isotherm. This graph. This graph is known as an isothermal line because this is taking place at a constant temperature. Do we understand this? A minute to note it down. Hey. Hey. Have you noted it down, Bacha? Okay. Now comes this graph. These are isotherms drawn at different temperatures. One isotherm is drawn at temperature T2, the blue one. The other isotherm is drawn at temperature T1, the red one. And as you can see by common sense, this temperature T2 is more than the temperature T1. Do we understand this? Pressure is constant. Volume is directly proportional to, again, something has happened. Okay. We understand this, that uh, the temperature which is higher, the graph will be upper. The temperature which is lower, the graph will be the lower one. Please note this down. Have you noted down, Bacha? Yes, sir. No, sir. Then, sir, this question, sir, for you, sir. You might not be able to solve it completely, but you will have to solve it till the point that you can solve it. A very simple question. And the question goes like this. Two moles of a gas, which gas not given, at 127 degrees Celsius, expands isothermally since its volume is doubled. Calculate the amount of work done. They have only asked you work done, but I will ask you two more questions. Find the work done, delta W. Find the change in internal energy, delta U. Find the heat given in this process. All the three things, if you find, you will get confident and you will be able to solve the question in the examination. All your time begins now.
Have you done this, anyone? Yes. Let us solve now question now. This is the net isothermal. I mean, the process is isothermal. So the first thing I know, the change in internal energy has to be zero. Do we understand this? We also know that change in internal energy is zero and delta Q will be equal to delta W. Yes or no? And you have 2000 different formulas. So I will just use one of these 2.303. And RT log to the base of V2, log to the base 10, V2 by V1. Yes or no? The value of N is given as 2. Temperature is 400 Kelvin, V2 by V1 is 2. I will just put the values, get the answer, stay happy. So my work done, which is the also the heat is equal to 2.303 multiplied by 2 multiplied by R 8.3 multiplied by temperature 400 multiplied by log of V2 by V1 log of V2 by V1 is log of 2. This will be the form in which the answer would be given. They might not give you the values because they might not want you to calculate all this. This will just get a question of maths and not a question of physics. Do we understand this? So this is what they are looking at, or probably this is what they are looking at. Do we understand this? Yes or no? No or yes? So what I'll do now, Is solve one or two more questions based on this. The processes that we have done, one process is remaining, which I don't think we can cover it now. So I am just leaving it for tomorrow. Tomorrow may ek or maro. So we'll do it tomorrow. Meanwhile, uh, this is the question that comes plus five or minus no, minus five or plus four. Let's see who can uh, give me the answer for this one. In an isothermal thermodynamic process, the value of work done by a system is A, B, C, D. One, two, three, four. And I'm waiting for your answers, Bacha. Question number 66. This is from your sheet. Which is the correct option? I hope everyone understands this, uh, and I hope that you can see the entire question. And the correct option is option number four. All the things are correct. Do we understand this? Yes or no? So as you can see, what we have done in theory are very, very difficult things, but what come in examination hall? <laughs> are very simple stuff do we understand this so even if you can do half of the question in the class or even one question in the entire class you would have done a tremendous job this is the next question a b c d don't have to do anything just tick tick the question tick the answer stay happy a system is brought from state A to B in an isometric change. You must understand. Remember what is isometric change. The amount of heat absorbed by the system is isometric change is isochoric change. Delta Q is delta U plus delta W. Delta W is zero and delta Q will be equal to delta U, DU. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. No, sir. Better I go, sir. This one, sir, again, the sheet is there with you, sir. The more the question that you do from the sheet, sir, the better it is for you, sir. 72, question number 72. If the energy given to a system is 35 joules and the work done by the system is 15 joules, 
the change in the internal energy of the system is a b c d 1234 should not take so much of time bachcha and the answer is 20 joules delta q is delta u plus delta w yes or no no yes If you can't do plus and minus, well, 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 you have lost minus five. Yes or no? Do we understand this? Okay. Then this one, you see, so simple questions. The value of CP for a diatomic gas is. It can't get simpler than this. Three, 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 three is the answer. Seven R by two, seven R by two. One more, one more, one more. When the system changes from one to another state, the value of work done. Nang, 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 nang. A, B, C, D. Question number sixty-five. I can't see your fingers, bacha. It depends on path, so it is option number four. We understand this, yes or no? अरे बोलो वी अंडरस्टैंड यस नो यस वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस आई एम गिविंग यू द आंसर यू कैन सी द टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट कम दे आर प्रीटी डैम सिंपल क्वेश्चन नंबर 81 एंड एन आईसो थर्मल एक्सपेंशन ऑफ अ गैस डंग 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 ए बी सी डी 1 2 3 4 Work done is zero. Heat is absorbed. Energy stored remains constant. Neither heat is supplied nor withdrawn. What is the correct answer? The internal energy remains constant because there is no change in temperature. So there is no change in internal energy. No change in internal energy means internal energy is constant. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. No, sir. We understand this. Hello, sir. One last question, sir, and I hope you will do the rest of the question on your own, sir. You cannot do all the questions, sir, because we have still not done one process, sir. But apart from that process, we have done everything, sir. The correct statement is: dang, 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 dang. A, B, C, D. क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी टू सर द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज डेफिनेटली रॉन्ग द फोर्थ ऑप्शन इज डेफिनेटली रॉन्ग ओनली फाइट इज बिटवीन सेकेंड एंड थर्ड डू वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस यसो नो एंड आई ऑलरेडी गिवन यू दैट फॉर द मोनोटोमिक गैस सीपी बाई सी वी हाइएस्ट यस ओ नो सो द आंसर इज टू दैट सेट यस ओ नो वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस यसो नो everything has been covered in your uh, uh, notes so i hope you would be able to do it one last question before i end up this is this one question number 88 the process in which heat given to a system is completely transformed into work remember that is not pos possible but the question is theoretical which process is that and i told you whatever i have said in the class every world is stardust the dust of the star Total heat is transformed into work, which is that process which is not possible, and it is isothermal process. I will leave the rest of the question to you. The question, as you can see, are pretty damn simple, pretty damn straightforward. The more the number of questions you do, I guess there are around one hundred seventy questions from the previous years. 
even if you can do 90 of them even if you can do 70 of them i can i'm sure that from the 70s you will see the same question in the examination hall if you can do all 172 you are through i'll end the class on this note i'll see you tomorrow i will find out the remaining processes one or two process and then i'll give you a small task and small task a small task because if you can do that small task small task uh, the, the 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 time in the class would be saved and we can spend more time in what in uh, discussing in discussing uh, this one so what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm gonna show you a page is this page is i think uh, page number 54 taken from your sheet if you can see this i have just uh, rotated the sheet by 90 degrees and you can see this is page number 54 do you see this this is page number 54 rotated by 90 degrees so this page number 54 what they have done is we have all the four processes written and compared do you see all these four processes isochoric isobaric isothermal and adiabatic all these four processes the table is there it would be landscape mode i've just converted into portrait mode because landscape i, I can't show you on the screen everything is there about these four processes if you can draw these if you don't draw it you have to remember this from your sheet everything is given a sheet we'll do adiabatic process which is also known as isentropic process in the next class and then we'll discuss this entire table everything that we have done is given in one table so your entire thermodynamics will be in one page that would be done in the next class see you there have a good day take care god bless you all Bye-bye. May God bless you.